You are listening to Feeling Good, a podcast for dentists. I'm Dr. Laura Mock, the life coach for busy dentists. This podcast explores how to feel better in all aspects of our lives so that we can be our best leaders. If you have been feeling stressed about being the owner of your practice and you want to change what you are getting at work and in your personal life, you are in the right place. And I'm happy you're here with me. How are you doing? This has been a challenging year, has it not? And we're more than halfway through 2020. How are things looking for you? For me, my practice is a little behind of where it was in 2019, but we're making it. And we're making some adjustments and some changes. Um, Not all of them bad. Some of them have been good. I'd say it's been a mix, but um, I'd love to hear from you if you are wanting to talk to somebody about how you're doing. I'd love to hear. Um, Today, actually, we are going to talk about something that happened to me last week. um, And the title of the episode is How to Not Go Home Grumpy. (laughs) So I'm sure you can guess what happened to me last week. And actually, you know, this happens a lot. And I think it happens a lot in dentistry. So that's why I'm going to talk about it today. So let me set the stage for you. I was having a perfectly good day. I have so many really, really nice patients, and my team is great, and we were just sort of working through the day. When I had a patient um, confront me during his exam about a fee that I charged him that he didn't think was really very justified or fair. And... Normally, when a patient wants to complain to me, I'm like, you know what? Bring it on. Let's hear what you have to say. And I have very good listening skills, and I sit and I will listen to them and hear what they have to say. And most of the time, just feeling heard is enough for patients who are unhappy to sort of get off of that angry road that they're on or whatever. So I didn't think this was going to be any different. Um, and the, the patient wasn't like yelling at me or anything. He just wasn't happy about this fee that I had charged. And I listened and tried to explain it to him. And the thing is that when I left the operatory, I knew he was still kind of mad. And so then I was also kind of mad. And my really good day spiraled because of this one conversation. Like I probably had... 30 conversations with patients and team members on that day. This was the one bad one. And I replayed it and replayed it and replayed it in my mind all the rest of the day while I was taking care of people. And then when I got home, I kept on replaying it. In fact, I continued to think about it when I should have been asleep. And so I asked myself the next day, why is it that I could have all these good things happen? All these people saying thank you and good job. And I'm so happy you guys are open and all those things. But I don't think about those. And I'm not happy from those. If I have a bad thing that happens, that is the thing that my brain is going to focus on. So what I decided to do is reach out to some of my Facebook friends in a group that has a bunch of dentists in it who all have a hobby that they like to share. It's called The Talented Dentist, run by Dr. Kathy Hung, who is an oral surgeon, and I recommend it. It's a very positive group. If you like being in groups and with like-minded people, these are people who have something other than dentistry that's happening in their lives, so that makes it kind of fun. And I just thought it would be a really good group of people to ask. And I was like, hey, listen, I had this great day. And I had one uncomfortable conversation and all of a sudden my day was completely destroyed, even though I had all these good things happen. So talk to me about it. And everyone agreed that it happens to each of us as dentists. And we went over some of the techniques that these dentists use to try to deal with this phenomenon. And the first one, which we talked about a lot in the conversation, was we need to put this type of day into evolutionary perspective. So because from an evolutionary psychology standpoint, we need to look at our brains as not necessarily what essentially makes us ourselves, but as an organ that has been curated 
over eons in evolution to keep our organism alive and safe. And that means that our brain needs to be looking for dangers, needs to focus on potential threats so that we can keep our organism safe. And that means that even when we're not physically in danger, our brain is going to be tending towards the negative. And honestly, just even remembering that that is true for me is so deflating, as in not deflating in a bad way, but that it deflates the problem that I've been thinking about. Oh yeah, that is why my brain stayed focused on that one bad conversation. Because that's what brains do. Because brains are trying to do their job, right? So we have this tendency towards negativity and it is for our survival. And if you think about it, and this is why the news is so negative. And this is why I don't read read or listen to the news too, by the way. Um, I mean, I'll read a little bit of news, but I'm amazingly uninformed. <laughs> And it's because I understand that the news is going to use their understanding of my brain as a way to sell my the attention of my eyeballs, basically. And people who make news know that the brain is paying attention to what is shocking and negative because that's how we're designed to be. So that is what they're presenting to us as the news. Now... As I said, this is something that helps me basically put that fact into perspective and it was really a really, really helpful first step towards not having to go home grumpy. The second piece of advice that I have for you is that when you are feeling a negative feeling, um, if you try to dismiss it too soon, it's going to come back. It's like a fly. It's going to come back and try to get in your face again, right? And it's really important if you are hoping that a negative feeling is going to go away, that you acknowledge the feeling. Don't just try to cover it up if you want it to go away. Acknowledge the feeling. So for example, I could have said to myself at any time during that 24-hour period when I was stewing about the conversation, I feel frustrated. And just say that to myself and then take a moment to ask myself what feeling frustrated even feels like. Because every emotion that we have has a physical sensation in our body. That's how we know what feeling we're feeling. And so I could have just closed my eyes and gone, I'm feeling frustrated and frustration feels like a tightness in my chest and a tingling in my arms or something like that. So... That would be my second piece of advice for you. If you are feeling frustrated, feel the frustration, acknowledge it, and see what it feels like. All right, number three. This is the one I always talk about. <laughs> I know I sound like a broken record, but um, it's so effective. And that is once you have felt your negative feeling, see what you can find to be grateful for. Because gratitude is one of the best feelings. And it's not even very hard to find something to be grateful for. But the thing is that it's almost so easy that we skip it. We're like, oh yeah, I could do that anytime. I could stop and make a list. I'm going to. I'm going to do it later. But then we never actually do it because it's so easy or we're so distracted by everything else. Sit down. And you can write it out, you can tell a friend, you can send yourself an email, you can send me an email, and tell your brain or somebody else what you have that you're grateful for. It's a wonderful exercise just to even just name five or ten things that are great in your life. Um, the reason that this works is that when you have thankful thoughts, the feeling of gratitude follows because remember our emotions come from our thoughts so make yourself have the feeling the thoughts and then the feelings will follow and honestly gratitude is really the best thing to feel right we have so many things to be grateful for and i think that this practice is universal if you look at any faith practice on the earth that involves humans every faith is going to tell you take some minutes to feel grateful because um, it just makes so much sense. Your life is so much better when you acknowledge what you have to be grateful for. All right. Number four. 
Give yourself and your brain new things to think about. And what I mean when I say this is looking for hobbies and pastimes. Now, this is why I reached out to the Talented Dentist Facebook group, because this is a group of dentists who diligently spend time doing something else besides dentistry. Um, And number one on my list of things that you can do in this category is find somebody else who needs help. There's nothing like service to your fellow beings to lift up your soul. And I don't really think that it counts when we're talking about the dentistry for which you get paid. That is not something that's going to make you feel as good as if you choose to do some dentistry for free, which we do in our office because it's just more convenient, but also you could find non-dental service to do. For example, I think I told you, well, some of you, that I our neighborhood had a tornado go through it. And I spent a whole day at my neighbor's house cleaning and picking up sticks and um, sweeping up broken glass and stuff. And I had a great time. <laughs> and then I went home and I made them all lunch and brought it back. And it was like the highlight of my week. Okay, so there was a tornado and I was cleaning up junk and and trees and I had a really good time. So I'm just saying, if you need a quick pick me up, find someone who needs some help and help them. And there's other hobbies that you can take on. There's reading, which gives you a lot of things to think about. And you can read about people who aren't as fortunate as you, or you can read a romance novel or comedy, whatever makes you happy. And then there's cooking. Uh, there's a lady in the talented Facebook group. Well, a lot of those, um, a lot of those dentists are cooks. And there's this one who does bento boxes. Oh my gosh, her food is like art. She chooses escape to do and then puts it together. It's really really cool. And then there's exercise. Exercise has a special place in my heart for making you feel better because when you make your heart rate go up you literally get endorphins in your body. So it's sort of like taking a happy pill and your body will be healthier for it too. So it's like a double dip of good. So you can take a walk, you can go for a bike ride, you can go for a swim, you can do running, um, whatever makes you happy. And then there's art. There's some really cool photographers in that group. There's one who takes photos of birds and then there's another who takes photos of the sky and another one who does underwater photography it's so cool um and art there's um a gal a dentist in there who draws anatomy pictures oh my gosh she is so talented um and then there's music you know we've got piano players who are dentists and instrumental and then there's even just listening and appreciating music but I don't know why making it seems to be more satisfying to me And then you could try gardening. I have, um, this year is my first year with a garden because we moved to an acreage and (laughs) I'm taking pictures of my plant babies all the time. It's so ridiculous, but it's so satisfying. You go out there and you're like, a cherry tomato and I grew this and now I'm going to eat it. (laughs) And let me ask you a question. Well, you just answer it yourself, but what did you used to do that you really like doing, that you've been telling yourself, you don't have time for now. Because I'm telling you right now, the time that it takes to do that thing and engender those good feelings is worth it. During the pandemic shutdown, I started to think about my time differently because all of a sudden for over two months, I was unemployed and I decided to start taking vocal performance lessons. I have a daughter who is an aspiring opera singer, so I asked her teacher if she would teach me as well. And so now I, um, my daughter and I have one prepared duet. It's from the Mozart opera, The Marriage of Figaro, and then we have another one we're getting ready to. And it's just so much fun. Every time I have a lesson, I feel so invigorated when I'm done. In all these all these years, I told myself that I was too busy to sing um, because I used to I used to like singing and I played the violin, but I never did it anymore because I was like, well, if I'm gonna do something in my free time, it should probably be something that makes me healthier, and then I would go exercise or whatever. But it was really fun to make um, time for for music. So, what are you wishing that you could do? What did you used to do that re- brought you joy? that you haven't done in a long time. 
I encourage you to give it a try. All right. This is the last one I have. This is number five. And this is a coachy one, <laughs> but it's really true. It's really advantageous. Do a thought awareness exercise. And the reason that is important is because remember, your thoughts create your feelings. And most of our thoughts are auto-generated. We don't even think about what we're thinking. We drive to the store, we prep the crown, we cook dinner. We're not even thinking about the fact that there are sentences in our mind. But when you do a thought awareness exercise, you actually look at your thoughts. And you can do this by doing what's called a thought dump or um, a thought download. It's basically the same thing. Sit down with a piece of paper and write down the sentences that come into your mind. You're going to write them all down, whether they're true or not, whether somebody would judge you for saying them. All you're doing is like you're just taking the thoughts and you're dumping them out onto a piece of paper. That's why they're called a thought dump. And this allows you to see your thoughts, which then allows you to look at them and say, is this the thought? Is this a thought that I would like to keep or would I like to get rid of it? And then if you're, if you're seeing thoughts that you're having that are tending towards the negative, um, what I do is I go, man, that was a negative thing you did today, brain, but it's fine. I see what you're doing and now I'm going to dismiss it. I don't need to keep that thought anymore. And it's like I visualize that thought in a bubble and I just push the bubble out of my mind. And of course it's gonna pop back in, but I'm really persistent with my bubbles too, so then I can just go ahead and dismiss it. All right, so you guys, in summary, if you don't wanna go home grumpy and you're noticing that you're focusing on one little thing that went wrong even though you had a great day, first, you're going to be aware of the fact that that's just your brain being a human brain and tending towards the negative. And then number two, you're going to name your feeling and just acknowledge it and feel it. So it would have helped me if I would have just taken a breath and said, I'm feeling frustrated right now. This is what it feels like. And then number three, you're going to find some things to be grateful for and feel the gratitude because it's like the best feeling to feel. And then you're going to give yourself some new things to let your brain think about. So we're talking about hobbies, cook a nice dinner, plant a garden, go for a walk, do something for you, do something you used to do that you've been telling yourself you're too busy to do. But trust me, though, time is totally worth it. And then do a thought download. Find out what's been going on in that head of yours. You will be amazed. Everyone is amazed when they do a thought download and see what they've been thinking. All right, you guys, that is all I have for you today. I will see you out there in the big bad world. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to Feeling Good, a podcast for dentists. To download my free workbook on how better leadership starts with your feelings, go to my website, thelifecoachforbusydentist.com and click on Get Free Help.